a month later. My vacation to Turks and it was phenomenal. Body, mind, and soul rejuvenation. I met up with a group that adopted me in. I would never have imagined how great it turned out to be. Sailing, snorkeling, volleyball, softball and the attention of several ladies made my trip outstanding. I am attaching a picture of one lady who captured my attention and more importantly, I captured hers. I can't believe I missed out on this lifestyle while I was in college, but I'm making up for lost time. Now, upon my return, while I was on vacation, I allowed my ex-sister-in-law's husband's family to use my house to tour DC. That turned into my ex-sister-in-law and her family also staying at the house. All 17 of them. STBX and other men picked up some of them at the airport and took them to my house. This somewhat bothered me. I told my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law that other man was not allowed in my house. I took it one step further and sent other man a text telling him if he stepped one toe in my house I would have him arrested. STBX texted me back that they would not disrespect me like that. STBX and other man also went to watch fireworks on the 4th of Joel with the rest of the family. It stung to see other man with them in the pictures. The funny thing, my brother-in-law said every time the camera came around, other man was trying to insert himself in the picture. I took some solace that there was never a picture of STBX and other man together in any of the pictures. They were somewhat cut out of the group and were barely talked to. I also came back and found that more stuff was removed mostly souvenirs and I sent her a text to let her know that if one more thing was removed without my permission, I would call the police. On the GF front, I'm still dating her exclusively and she has fallen pretty hard. I love her, but I'm starting to wonder if it a bit too fast to date her exclusively too soon. The last thing I want to do is hurt her. The trip was a huge ego boost. I enjoyed my time. GF said before I left that she could possibly put something together and go with me. I told her the trip was about me. It was something I needed to do. I threw my wedding ring off the back of a boat on what was our 23rd wedding anniversary. I was wondering how I was going to feel about that. I did not feel hatred. I felt a little nostalgic but for the most part I was indifferent. Besides, I had plenty to take my mind off of that day. But to be honest, I'm much happier. Life is good. Last night a smoking hot Romanian woman and I started talking at the hotel bar, which turned to dinner then more drinks. I had told her about GF and she told me she was also just out of a relationship. She's 31. Anyways, she asked me up for a nightcap and I politely declined. GF has been on my mind a lot. Update. Things with D16, soon to be 17, and her boyfriend have not been going well. D16 was really reserved last year. Not only because of circumstances of our marriage and how D16 discovered the texts, but because she is somewhat of an introvert. But now I'm learning that her boyfriend is really controlling. D22 and other family has seen this firsthand. I called STBX to have her come over to discuss D16 and the issues. We had a good conversation about what we needed to do. We both agree that perhaps I should go early to pick her up. I've already contacted D16's boyfriend to tell him about my concerns on how controlling he's been. STBX tried to make some small talk. She noticed my new watch and saw my picture with me and the women in Turks and Caicos. She didn't say anything about the pictures, but I noticed her eyes constantly looking over my shoulder to look at them. She asked if the watch was a gift from my lawyer friend. I told her it was a gift I bought myself. Family members have updated me on STBX and her ultimatums to other man that she wanted to be in a house by the 1st of September and she has told him that he should look for a different job. GF has told me that STBX may be knocking on my door pretty soon trying to come back. I told GF that there is not a snowball chance in hell that I would ever take her back. STBX told me during our discussion that she is no longer on meds and it was messing with her head and she is much clearer now. She went on to tell me how they will be moving into a house soon and is hoping that D16 will come stay with her on weekends. I have been overanalyzing that conversation. There is still not a snowball chance in hell I'd take her back, but I actually never thought she would come back. STBX is a very stubborn prideful person and usually never apologizes. I wonder if she's starting to see that the grass is not greener and that I am no longer falling apart. GF is a little concerned. Of course, she has no reason to be. I did not will not try to fix things for STBX any longer. She was complaining about her financial aid, how other man's accountant has not given them his tax returns to get pre-approved for a house loan. I stayed quiet. STBX also told me on the phone the other day that other man offered to call D16's boyfriend. Long story. STBX said I told him, Jack, that you, being me, would probably like the pleasure in that. I was angry, but calmly said that there is nothing pleasurable about the situation. What I wanted to say is if that piece of crap sticks his nose into another thing I will knock it off. D16 has officially broken up with her boyfriend. There were many red flags on his controlling side and my advice and D22's advice often fell on deaf ears. D16 finally realized that he was bad for her. The D process is going well. I wish I had filed under fault grounds no matter what the cost was. I can officially file on the 17th of November due to VA laws with a minor child. 
Hopefully the process will take less than a month because of the signed separation agreement. STBX has changed her wedding date three times. It is now scheduled for March. I have thought about showing up with Garth Brooks' friends in low places playing loudly, but I'm going to stay away. I will settle with other man, I know that for a fact, but I'll wait for the right time. It's not about trying to win her back, it's about the man-to-man face-to-face discussion that I need. It's the principle of the matter. Two months later, a year ago, yesterday is when I found out about STBX and other man. This past year has been a difficult year, however. It has been a year of growth. Not very much drama going on with STBX. She's tried but I refuse to get drawn in. D17, she is doing amazing. Now that she has broken up with her long-distance boyfriend, she is more social and is enjoying her senior year. She does want to move back to Georgia for college but I'm slowly chipping away at her. D17 has stayed the night on a few weekends with STBX and other man. It bothered me a little but I do want them to get along. I know all too well about regret regarding lost time with parents. D17 told me that other man is annoying and is trying too hard to be funny. STBX, a few weeks ago, she texted me complaining about my work trips and that she will require D17 to come stay with her while I'm gone. D17 shot that down and I told STBX if it is too much of a hassle. I have other people who will check in on her. STBX did not like seeing the pictures of me and GF in the house. We have been doing a lot of activities together. STBX told D17 that when she's here, she will put the pictures face down. D17 told her not to touch the pictures. STBX also told me that she knows that I don't care about her since I'm not going to give her any more furniture, household items and will not support her finishing up her degree. I told her that she signed the agreement and it is not my responsibility to support her any further. She threatened to take me to court and I told her that would be a big mistake, because this time I will unleash my lawyer. Funny, I haven't heard any more about that. GF, simply amazing. She leaves me cards. She constantly touches me, wants to hold hands, and is just a joy to be around. I have fallen for her, head over heels. I told her that I have endured the rain and she is my rainbow. I am putting together a playlist of certain songs that go along with some of our dates, times we have enjoyed. It's funny how so much can change in a year. I was in the darkest pit of hell this time last year. Daily dose of drama. So, plans have changed for Thanksgiving. In the agreement, I have D17 and STBX as her for Christmas. I was smart enough to put a clause in the agreement that if STBX was unable to attend D22's graduation, I would keep custody during the holidays. STBX and her other men are attending the graduation. Hope I can contain myself. But will be not staying the entire time. Plans were to be out of town during Thanksgiving with GF's family. I brought the whole scenario up with D17 and she said she wanted to be with me during both holidays. Great. Yesterday I come home and D17 tells me that she will be spending Thanksgiving with STBX because it's only fair. I'm not angry that she wants to spend time with STBX. I'm angry because she committed to something and then backed out. A trend lately. D17 said it was fair and there was another reason but would not tell me. I called D22 and she told me that STBX told D17 that there were some abnormal findings from STBX's last doctor's visit. I can't believe that STBX would pull this card. No wait. I do believe it. I have not told D17 that I know. I only told her that I understand. D17 will be around other man on Thanksgiving. That bothers me too. He is also going to be at D22's graduation next month. It will take everything in me not to confront him. That time is about D22. I'm biding my time but I will settle with him. That's for sure. A week or two later, there was a setback. I told D22 that I really wasn't comfortable with other man attending her graduation. D22 told me that she did not want any drama. I told her that it is her and my son-in-law's choice on who attends their graduation. D22 called STBX and told her that she does not want her other man at the graduation because she did not want me to be upset or to confront him. STBX fell off the deep end and said if he wasn't invited then she wouldn't go either. Needless to say, this really upset D22. STBX called and left a really nasty voicemail telling me to get over her already. I called STBX back and to my surprise, I was cordial. She explained that they could only stay for three days because she has to work and of course he had to get back to his used car sales. I told her that I heard her voicemail and that it was disrespectful and I did not appreciate it and no longer had to listen to it. I warned her that if she raised her voice with me, I would end the conversation. We talked about their plans and where they would be staying. D17 and I will be staying with D22 and they were getting a hotel and then checking out on her graduation to spend Christmas with her sister on the 21st. She actually asked about GF and apparently D17 has told her that I am extremely happy now. STBX seemed to be fishing for my feelings for GF. I didn't talk about her. STBX said she was hoping that I have moved on. I was honest with her. I told her that I accepted what has happened but I am still working on moving on. 
It's only been a year. GF put things into perspective for me. She is really great about that. First, like many have done on here. Thanks, Chuck. She reminds me that my anger is misplaced. It is my soon-to-be ex. I filed for divorce last Friday after one long year. That did not honor her vows. She also said that she would hope that I would want her beside me for important events in my life to include my children's milestones. She's 100% right. I texted D22 and STBX and told them that I didn't mind if other man was there. I understood that STBX loves him, bitter to write, and that I promised that there would be no drama. STBX actually texted me apologizing for her behavior. This past weekend, D17 stayed with STBX. STBX has now lost her job because they would not allow her time off for the graduation. It's really going to hurt when I don't pay her the spousal support in Jan. My lawyer was smart enough to put in the agreement that spousal support would stop in Feb or after one year of cohabitation. I'm actually angry that the courts allow spousal support for an adulterous bee. As for me and GF, I'm smitten and she is with me as well. I'm spending Thanksgiving with her and her family. I love how I feel when I'm with her and without her. A month later, the trip Friday was a trip from hell. It started raining and stuff in the back of my truck started getting wet. Forecast didn't call for rain when I left. Then D17 was sick and threw up in the truck. To top it off, while talking to D22, I heard STBX's other man laughing in the background it really pissed me off. When I go to the graduation, STBX, other man, and his son were sitting with STBX's family. I approached other man and shook his hand. You could only imagine the shocked look on their faces. I could tell that the family was apprehensive when I approached. During pictures, STBX stood far away from me and I looked at her and told her I wouldn't bite. Everyone laughed. At the after party, I acted like I was indifferent, which really wasn't an act. I did catch STBX looking at me a few times. I could only imagine what was going through their minds. Today my girls are celebrating Christmas with STBX and STBX's family. With other men. To say that I feel sad knowing that this is was once a tradition that I shared with them for many years is an understatement. STBX looked gorgeous yesterday. Too bad her heart is a complete opposite. I wanted my family to play our annual football game since STBX was once a professional football player. But the old, crippled bastard can barely walk. Apparently, he was hurt when he fell off a horse and needs a hip replacement. I can't believe I was replaced by a broken down old, crippled car salesman. So today I go off to finish Christmas shopping alone which is okay. GF is flying in later this week. It's official. I am a divorced man as of today. I sent STBX a text telling her that I was sorry for all of the hurt that I ever caused her and offered her my forgiveness and well wishes on their new life. I sent her fiancé a text offering my forgiveness as well but did not condone the circumstances. I also told him to take care of STBX and to have respect, patience, and eventually love for my girls. I also told him that I will never allow anyone to hurt my girls or they would find out how far my wrath would go. This has been a long painful path but it has made me stronger. It's amazing how much I have grown. It has taken a lot of therapy, crying, exercise, and love to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. To everyone on here that has helped me, I want to say thank you. To everyone on here looking for help, I can only offer my story. It is not a direct path to peace and happiness but it has led me to the right path. You have to go on your own journey but it can be done. I am now moving to life after divorce. Everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I did it for me, not for them. I'll never forget but looking back we were never truly happy. Weeks later. So, I called D17 on the way home on Mon and she said that my ex. It's really good to call her that now. Was there helping her with some homework, nursing skills. When I got there ex was trying to make small talk with me. I was cordial but didn't care to talk with her. She was complaining about her school, how she lost her job, how her computer wasn't working. On and on and on. Then she noticed a picture of me and GF together. After she left, D17 told me that STBX saw a really nice picture frame that GF bought me, missing the picture that she is getting printed out, and said it who got your dad this frame, and why doesn't it have a picture, that's kind of stupid. D17 said that she acted really jealous. I have to be honest, that made me feel good. My comment, what a good ending for OP, he basically got an upgrade, for free. That's the best ending you can hope for. Story 2. A few months after I started dating my first long-term GF, and my first physical partner, she cheated on me, told me months afterwards. First told me he kissed her, the next day told me more happened. Since I didn't know this site or any other sites, I stayed but did many wrong things. I only told two friends to get support. I didn't insist on NC, he was part of her group of friends. I didn't insist on many of the things that are advocated here. I tried my hardest to make things okay. She had psychological issues and was on medication etc. Attempted suicide, self-hurt in my presence. In hindsight, I was way too codependent, too Mr. Nice Guy. I did stand my ground on some things, for which I'm grateful. 
like no more unprotected bonding, no bonding at all for a while to avoid pregnancy etc. after several short-term breakups instigated by her. She finally left me, alleging that she needed to be single for a while because she had never been single for a long time and she wanted to develop on her own, to become strong. But at the same time, she said that she didn't know what she'd do if the guy with whom she cheated asked her out and wanted to be with her. I stayed in touch for a while, thinking I had the truth and that we could eventually be friends. We went to the same college, had lots of common friends etc. or even get back together. I was hurting, got into therapy and started working on my issues and getting over the hurt she caused. After finding this site and others, I started wondering if I ever got the full truth, probably not. I realized she was never remorseful. Months afterwards she'd get mad if I triggered, accused me of dwelling on things, etc. I realized I would have to get tested for STD etc. I started feeling stupid forever believing her, wondering if she ever loved me etc. and it made the fallout even worse than before when I was in denial, ignorant. After that, I told her to never contact me again and that if we'd ever see each other by chance in public, that she should ignore. I've cut off my mutual friends since then, after staying in touch with them for too long. It's been three plus years since then, but only around one year since I discovered this site and started unsuppressing things. It still hurts, and I still haven't let anyone get nearly as close to me as her. I haven't been in a real relationship since. I still love her, I think, and I still hate what she has done. So, it's a funny place to be in. I'm trying to come to terms and find some sort of inner closure. And reading here has, thus far, helped. I'm still attending therapy, for issues related to her and issues predating her. I think rationally I have many things figured out now, but emotionally I'm still way behind. Now I'm in my late twenties. We didn't marry. We said we'd marry once I'd finish my master's degree, talked about starting a family, picked names for the kids and everything, but things went south before any of that happened. Unfortunately, I know this is a predominantly marriage forum, but I've been lurking here for a long time and found it extremely helpful. So I hope I'm not overstepping any lines. I had planned on marrying her and spending the rest of my life with her. After her, I've been in several briefer relationships, but I was always holding myself back, both out of fear of getting hurt again, but I think even more for fear of hurting the other person due to my issues. My ex started dating me before she got truly over the hurt her ex, and it was extremely hard for me once she and I realized that. So, her baggage, her ex and her personal issues, foo issues, psychological issues etc. contributed a lot to the difficulty of the relationship. So when we broke up, I was extremely determined to never ever hurt someone like she had hurt me. So I was very honest with every girl that come close to dating me about everything. So that each girl would have an idea of what she'd be getting herself into. Most of them wisely decided to disengage, and with some I saw myself I wasn't all that into or that they were too young to fully comprehend how much I could hurt them due to my issues. And I've never been the one for casual bonding etc. so I couldn't get over her by getting under someone else. In the few relationships, the other girls were quite invested wanted to spend a lot of time with me etc. But it never got me fully invested. Maybe I wasn't ready, maybe I didn't click with them etc. But for whatever reason, the relationship soon ended. So, I think that while I do miss being in a relationship, I don't miss it that much that I'd want to or be able to be just with anyone. And as for my feelings for her, like I said, it's kind of like love-hate greater than I still have very positive feelings for her. But I still have very negative feelings as well. I still wish I could someday end up with her that we'd work things out now that we'd both be more mature etc. and not with someone else. I have met women who were rationally much better for me, that had her good sides without the bad things. Like cheating, lying, mood swings etc. But I never got so attracted to them despite their interest. Perhaps a sign of my broken picker. And now that I've been uncovering issues from my early childhood, I can see it will be a long time before I'll be able to be in a healthy, functional relationship. So I'm staying away from women for the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, my bottom and my heart still haven't figured out my brain has. That she was a deeply troubled person and that I'm lucky I got away before she got accidentally pregnant or gave me an STD. While it's been relaxing to not be in touch with her. On the other hand I wonder whether seeing her act single or learning about her behavior afterwards etc. would have helped me really see the real her. But after we broke up and were still in very occasional contact, I told everyone not to tell me what she was doing in life. My counselor at the time was focused on rebuilding my self-image and digging deep for underlying issues. So, we uncovered buried issues of emotional and other kind of abuse from my toxic family. Abandonment issues from one half of my family. We haven't spoken to them in over 10 years, since they cut off contact because of some inheritance issues. And lately we've been having to focus on my anxiety issues which have made me into a very hypochondriac persona and severely limit my everyday life. 
So, I've recently started taking antidepressants. Up to two years ago, I was basically having to be Mr. Superman, helping to take care of everyone in my family financially, emotionally, etc. Job, college, extracurricular projects on a grand scale. And before that I was also taking care of my ex. And then my body and mind started to crack up and burn out. I've spent most of my money on therapy and doctors, and now I've been dealing with the fallout of 20 plus years of not so great things. So, my ex is currently a minor problem compared to the rest, but still, I guess it hurts because my period with her was the only period when I felt happy. Like I had it all and things were normal and had a good future to look to. So maybe that's what I miss the most, more than her as the individual. I try to tell myself after time I think of her that you're lucky you didn't marry her have kids or got an STD from her. But like you said, it's quite frustrating to have such a disconnect within you towards them. Of being able to focus on their good sides and ignoring the bad things. It's quite possible she has some sort of disorder. It certainly would fit some of the things I've experienced. That's one of the reasons I somehow wish I stayed in the loop and found out what she's being going through afterwards, so I could be reassured that I wasn't the reason. A couple of weeks ago we walked past each other. She was with some other dude. I just walked on like a stranger, she turned her head away. It was weird, and it was like getting punched in the gut. I think I've only recently started to let myself truly grieve and process everything. I'm counting my blessings I didn't have kids with her. It would be so hard to have to deal with her for the next 18 years. Rest of my life. And I shudder to think how much the kids would suffer because of all of it. I think bipolar fits her much better, as she had very little symptoms of BPD. I remember she was telling me she suffered from depression and was taking antidepressants every day when we met for orders of her psychiatrist. After a while, she started cutting them down, I assume on advice from her psychiatrist, and by the end she was taking them once a week. I remember reading a lot about depression, she gave me stuff to read, so I always tried to help her overcome her bad periods etc. She never devalued me, never flipped switches instantaneously, she trusted me. She wanted me near her when she felt bad, though often she wanted me there but at the same time she wanted me to go away, so she could deal with it alone etc. She didn't create facts, though she exaggerated sometimes. She was rarely angry but usually sad, feeling worthless. I don't know, I wish I paid more attention and was more proactive, but at the time I trusted her and her doctor. I read what she had asked me to read and tried to do my best. I don't know what would be worse from my selfish point of, her having BPD, bipolar or just depression. I'm glad for her that she has the less serious problems, but a small, ugly part of me would have preferred if she had BPD, because I would feel less guilty. I'd wonder less what I could have done more. Damn, sometimes I'm a really bad guy. Not to fight it and be happy for her that she'll be able to be truly happy with proper medication. My comment, what do you guys think of OP's self-reflection? Do you self-reflect from time to time? Comment down and let me slowly prepare the next video.